Hey guys, this is Meredith, and today we're going to be talking about diesel emission systems. Diesel engines today um, are actually mandated, at least um, the on-highway vehicles are mandated by the EPA, and um, there's a couple changes that have taken place over the last few years, um, and those changes pertain to reducing um, NOx gases and diesel particulate matter. Um, more recently, the diesel particulate um, so you're not, any of the new trucks on the road today, you're not going to see them blowing black soot out their stacks. Um, Nox gas you can't actually see, um, but that's reduced. So I wanted to kind of go over these systems. Um, this is a really, really basic drawing. Obviously there's a lot more involved, um, but these are at least all the steps that the exhaust essentially goes through. Um, I also wrote down the years um, that the EPA did start introducing it. Um, EGR, um, you will actually find on gasoline engines as well. Um, however, gasoline engines don't produce the soot that you see in diesel engines, so that's why gasoline engines don't have to have a DPF or anything like that. So um, I wanted to take you kind of step, step by step through this and uh, what each thing does um, so you can understand you know exactly what's happening and for those of you you know in the industry we're starting to see this a lot more often I know almost every day um, I'm having to regen a truck um, you know or work on the EGR or the DPF system or add def fluid um, and it, it just helps if you kind of understand the basic you know route that the exhaust takes and what it has to go through so um, in this drawing uh, I kind of highlighted some of the the main parts you've got your intake and your exhaust um, the first step um, the EPA actually introduced it in 2002 and uh, I do have it on my car I have it on my Jeep um, but it is a primary part of a diesel setup nowadays um, and what EGR is is called ex exhaust gas recirculation and what it does is pretty much exactly what its title says um, as exhaust comes out of the combustion chamber some of that exhaust is routed back into your intake and uh, what that does is it reduce, reduces your combustion temperature um, which in turn reduces the temperature um, which lowers NOx gases. So higher temperatures, higher combustion temperatures increase NOx gas and what NOx gas is is nitrous oxides, it's NO2 and NO and uh, it's poisonous to breathe, um, it's bad for the environment um, so any reduction in that is good. Um, so what EGR does is it takes some of that um, exhaust gas, puts it back in. Um, exhaust gas is essentially inert gas, it will not burn. Um, so it's almost, it's almost forcing an incomplete combustion process within the combustion chamber. Um, unfortunately, by reducing the NOx gases, you've also reduced your efficiency, um, a little bit of gas mileage, you're gonna lose a little bit of power and you're going to increase soot levels um, because that combustion is not considered complete. Um, so uh, for a while all they had was an EGR valve um, and this valve which is this round thing that I drew up here, um, this valve is typically operated by a computer on trucks. Um, on my car it happens to be vacuum actuated. On newer cars I know it is electronic, the ECM controls it. Um, but one way or the other, depending on driving speeds and what you're doing, um, that EGR valve will open and close and allow up to 30 to 50 percent exhaust gas to come back into the intake um, to help cool down um, that combustion process a little bit. So um, after the EGR valve, um, your exhaust temp is a little bit cooler. This is your turbo. Um, it's going to go down and it's going to hit your DPF, um, which is kind of a muffler-like thing. It looks like a muffler. Um, what D DPF stands for 
It's a diesel particulate filter. And what that does is it is a very fine filter. Um, it, it actually filters up to one micron. And the primary um, job of the DPF is to reduce soot. Now remember, because of the EGR, um, we've actually increased our soot level. And so the EPA came out in 2007 and said, okay, now that we've kind of controlled some of the NOx gas emissions, um, we need to take care of the soot that we've created. So nowadays you're not gonna see that black smoke pouring out the stacks um, the same way on like the big trucks going down the road, you're just not gonna see it anymore because it has this DPF filter. Now, the only problem with this filter is while it filters really, really well, um, it tends to get clogged. And the only way to unclog this filter is to heat it up and essentially burn that soot off. So um, the filter actually um, is very, very expensive. Um, if you replace the filter, it's upwards of $8,000 for a tractor filter. Um, it's very, very fine, like I said, down to one micron. And uh, you have a different system that actually helps that filter um, essentially clean itself while you're driving. And what that's called is regen. Um, and when the truck goes into regen mode, what it's doing is it's purposely heating up that filter to about 1100 degrees, which helps burn that soot and get rid of that soot so that way the filter is cleaned and ready to go a little bit longer. Now, um, let's say you're driving a truck down the road, what you'll see when the DPF starts to get clogged is you'll see a flashing light um, on the dash and the computer actually has sensors in your DPF um, that read the soot level, read the temperature, and that sends it back to your ECM, which is essentially the brain of the vehicle. And it says, hey, this, this filter is starting to get clogged. It needs a regen. So it will send a regen request through the dash um, to the driver. And if the driver um, ignores that, which the driver can, you can actually hit a button to say, you know, cancel regen. Um, and if the driver keeps doing that, the DPF will become clogged to a point where a regen no longer will, uh, will fix it. Um, at that point in time, you have to bring it into a shop. Um, one of us has to pull the whole DPF out and we either have to send it out to be baked or we have to replace it with a new one, and, um, which is very, very expensive on these big trucks. Like I said, they're upwards of $8,000 for a new filter um, because they are made with uh, precious metal, platinum, palladium, um, and a few other things. So uh, you really, really want to regen your truck whenever it requests to because that's, you know, it's going to help. <laughs> help keep things in working condition. So another thing with DPF is you don't want it to clog up because if this starts clogging up, you're going to increase your exhaust back pressure, um, which is going to essentially uh, force some of that soot back into the engine. And the engine oil will collect the soot, and soot is very abrasive. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to start, you know, damaging the inside of your engine, your camshafts, um, clogging oil ports, any orifices. Um, and remember, you know, newer engines, um, the newer the engine, the smaller the orifices that the oil has to go through. So if they're starting to get clogged up with soot, um, you, can actually, you can actually have premature failure, um, rather catastrophic failure, um, which I've seen. I've seen, you know, engines that have blown out um, completely because, you know, drivers ignored um, regenning their truck. Uh, maintaining the system so um, it is kind of a critical system to uh, take care of and and actually maintain so um, another detail about regening your truck when you get that request on your dash one thing it requires is high rpm so a regen will take place um, when you're on the freeway or the highway um, and, you, and you're driving at higher speeds. If you're driving through town, it's, it's not going to be able to regen until you get back on the freeway. So um, 
that would be considered a regular regen. Um, I know some trucks actually have an option for a parked regen where let's say you're parked in a parking lot. Um, that message will come up on the dash. You can actually tell it to do a parked regen. Um, and it will, the computer will put the engine into a high idle and it'll stay that way for about 40 minutes and it will bake the DPF essentially on its own in the parking lot. So there is, you know, a variety of ways for the driver to take care of this. Unfortunately, I'm not sure why, but a lot of truck drivers don't like to do it. <laughs> so we get, we get a lot of trucks um, coming in where I have to go in on the computer and do a forced regen because at that point in time, the DPF is so clogged um, that a regular regen will not work. Um, the driver has ignored the prompts on the dash. They just kept, you know, driving or shut the engine off before the regen could complete or something like that, you know. And um, at that point in time, you have to have a shop um, do a forced regen, which, you know, takes special software where we have to manually override the computer and say, hey, I know you're clogged, but we're gonna bake the DPF for you. You know, we're gonna we're gonna do it with our computer, and so we'll take the truck outside, we'll plug it into the computer, and it will do a forced regen. Um, if the forced regen doesn't fix the problem because the DPF is so clogged, then it's time to send the DPF out to get baked, or we have to replace it. So um, it is. It is pretty important to take care of that. Um, now, DPF works um, a little bit differently depending on what engine you're working with. Um, on Caterpillar engines, DPF actually has um, an ARD head attached to it and it, it has an igniter, which is uh, essentially a spark plug. Um, it does have a fuel line. It does have a coolant line going to it. Um, so it's pretty much its own ignition to try to heat up that exhaust to the 1100 degrees. Um, other engines operate a little bit differently. They actually, uh, the computer will dump fuel after the combustion um, to try to heat up some of that exhaust. So there are a few different ways to try to bake that DPF. Um, but either way, you know, you want to stay on top of um, keeping that clean, otherwise you will begin to have problems and you can have rather catastrophic failure um, to your engine if you ignore it. Um, I am not familiar with, you know, pickup trucks, but I'm sure pickup trucks do have a regen request where they want you to get on the freeway and for God's sakes, you know, go out on the freeway for a little while and take care of it because it's an expensive thing to fix if you ignore it. So. Anyways, um, so after the DPF, which reduces soot, um, it goes to the next stage, which is an SCR, and what that stands for is Selective Catalytic Reduction, or a reducer. So this is the reducer, and uh, those of you who drive trucks or ambulances, um, you'll notice that you have a DEF tank or a DEF tank. Um, what that holds is diesel exhaust fluid. And uh, it comes with a blue cap, you know, there's all kinds of stickers on the side of the vehicle that says this is not your diesel tank, this is your DEF tank, don't mix the two up. Um, <laughs> I, have, I have run into people who have actually put diesel into the DEF tank because a lot of times the um, hoses are right next to each other, so don't mix that up. But what a DEF tank is, um, diesel exhaust fluid is essentially ammonia. Um, it is uh, derived from uh, cow urine <laughs> and uh, urea and what ammonia does is when it combines with nitric, nitrous oxides which is your NOx gases um, so you've got oh my marker decided to die NH3 um, which is ammonia right plus your NOx gases which are a result of your combustion temperatures, um, when you combine the two, you will get essentially a harmless water and nitrogen. So that's the point 
of your SCR is to once again reduce those NOx gases because remember the DPF heats up the exhaust once again to about 1100 degrees well with that extra heat once again you are raising your NOx gas um, concentration so that's why the SCR in, in 2010 the EPA was like, okay, we need to focus on reducing the nitrous oxides coming out of the exhaust because the DPF, once again, you know, with one comes the other. So if you're going to reduce your soot, you're going to increase your NOx gases. If you're going to decrease your NOx gases, you're going to increase your soot. So that's why um, you see the SCR after the DPF is... Uh, it takes care of that NOx gas that now is increased because you've reduced the soot. You've, you've raised the temperature once again. So um, after that is your muffler, which literally just is a muffler. It muffles the sound. Um, but that is, that is the basics of a diesel emission system. So I hope, I hope that kind of helps you guys understand what the system is comprised of and how it works. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.